Welcome back to the Portal Bonanza podcast brought to you by Hoop Scoot Media. I am Austin Getchy, joined by Kyle Curran. Kyle, we've uh, had a few day break, had some schedule conflicts, all that stuff, but we are back now. How are we feeling? Feeling good. Really good couple days of the portal, so... Yes, uh, not not a ton in the commitment side uh, due to the dead period being this week. So players were not allowed to actually take visits to the school and meet with the coach. They could have taken visits to the school, but not met with the coach, which would have been somewhat pointless. But um, yeah, so a lot of the commitments that filed in were from players who had already taken their visits. Maybe some players decided without actually taking an official visit, but yeah. A lot of good entries, though. I mean, it's it's pretty late into the portal, over halfway done. I believe we're over halfway done with the portal window. We're about halfway. Um, so, yeah, still lots of big names. There's still going to be lots of big names going in. There's been some good names today, but we will discuss names from whenever the last time we podcasted. So, like, basically Monday through Wednesday's entries, we'll have a top 25 list each coming for you later in the podcast after we get through our commitments and withdrawals and cut lists. So yeah, uh, first first commitment on the board is Trey White. Um, he is committed to Illinois from Louisville. What what do we think about this one, Kyle? I like the fit. I think it fits what Brad Underwood likes to do. Good defender. Um, well, he's a pretty dynamic scorer. So yes, Louisville was um. They were what they were, but I think White definitely has some more potential to unlock once he's playing for a real coach and at a real program. Still don't know why he went there last offseason, but he did. Um, Providence, they got St. Joe's big man, Chris Isandoko, who actually committed to the Friars back in high school, decommitted, ended up at St. Joe's, and a few years later, he is headed back to the Friars. Three years of eligibility. I know you're really in on him, so what can you tell us about this pick? They they love um, getting good base over there, man. Um, Crosswell, Adoro, now... Taking them all from day 10. Right, I know. Um, and I think Easton is just going to fit the bloodline there, so... Yes, a lot of uh, a lot of years left, three years left of eligibility. Definitely some things to touch up on in his game, but definitely has a size, some really nice skills for a size that will be a very good uh, player at a high major level uh, in due time. But yeah, Clark Slacker, Penn Transfer, he is off to USC. Um, I think this is a solid pickup. Not super high in him as like a major, high major difference maker, but if you can bring him off the bench, he can score, he can shoot. Um, I, I think it's a solid, solid addition. Yeah, um, should be good for off ball shooting, which is something uh, Arkansas needed last year. Um, so I yes. think uh, Moss is, you know, kind of addressing that need right away. So yes, definitely, yeah. they they did not get too much shooting last year. Um, Tyler Nickel. He is a good shooter. He is committed to Vanderbilt. Um, pretty solid pickup uh, from Virginia Tech. I think he can be a solid starter, maybe like six man, but very solid. Player. Very solid ad for Mark Byington. Still very, still a lot of spots to fill on the roster, I believe, but can't really go wrong with this. And then one of my favorite pickups so far in the portal, that is Alvaro Cardenas from San Jose State. He is going to Boise State. This is a great fit it's about what you could have asked for like i had boise state in my way too early top 25 which really holds no weight if we're being honest but um it's fun looking at where all the rosters were on like april 9th or whatever i had boise ranked because mainly because their front court do they still had uh dejan hart and stanley back but they didn't really have a true point guard which they had it they had that problem all last year because they were starting roddy anderson who isn't even really a true point guard and isn't really wasn't really that good this season. Um with his I'm step not sure up in competition. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Cardenas gives him a true point guard. He can really pass, was really efficient this year. Um San Jose State, obviously not that great, but in the same conference. So I think he did he have like a big game against him this year? Probably. I, remember watching, I mean I think he I remember played great watching, against good teams, like yeah, let's let's see what he did against Boise this year. Um, 
I guess he had zero points one of the games. That's not very good. He, yeah, I guess he kind of did bad both games. But he did good a lot of the other games. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's still a really, really good pickup. And then uh, it was Anderson to play off the guard and be more of a scorer. I think Kyle might have froze. We're back from our technical difficulties. Um, any any thoughts on Gardenas now? I know I know oh, you really we're like big, him. We're, we're big fans of Cardenas. Just watching him play, watching him control tempo, um, no matter the opponent, really. I mean, against the good teams like San Diego State, which they played with in both meetings for a while. I mean, the last one meeting, I guess, and they lost at the buzzer. Um, so, I mean, yeah, he, he's able to control tempo against anybody. I'm confident in that. Um, he's not sped up by any really good or talented team. He's not afraid to score the ball either. Um, he'll take his mid-ranges. He can shoot from three. Um, and he's just a great, great distributor. So, exactly yes. what they need. Yes, love that pickup. But another pickup that I really like is Giancarlo Rosado, FAU big man. He is out to Charlotte. Was really good last year. I was decent this year, but was injured a little bit this season. Golden really stepped up, so there wasn't as much of a need for him. But this is a great pickup. I think he could have gone high major if he wanted to. Really skilled. Mm-hmm. Um, any any more thoughts about him? I didn't. Yeah, say. FAU fans are acting all hostile about it. You know, I've seen and uh, you know, if when he shows off to FAU, make sure to bill him and it's just like. <laughs> He's a part of that Elite Eight team. Yeah, I mean, the coach uh, left. What do you want you want him to do? Right. I mean, to go in conference to Charlotte, you know, great coach over there, too. Um, You know, they have a lot of spots, I would assume. Yeah, I mean, they uh, lost their big man. I mean, Deshaun Jackson and... Uh, so it makes sense. Military. I can't get mad at it. No. Um, Zach Montgomery, he is going back to Bradley. I really like this pickup. Started his college career there. Was at Rhode Island this season. Um, really athletic. Really has gives you a lot of size in the wing guard. And yeah, he he was good at Bradley before in his role. And I think uh, Bradley should be looking pretty good with uh, him back. Even though he did lose a few big pieces, this yeah. is definitely a great um, pickup. I think they probably lost their front court. I would assume Leo. Uh, yeah, he, he's gone. Hannah, isn't he gone? I'm not sure. Maybe. Um. I know Hickman's back. Um, is he? I thought he he's gone, isn't he? Oh, is he in the portal? Yeah, he yeah. is. Okay. But D- Dean is back. Dean is back. Oh, that's good. That's really right. good. Um, oh, yeah. But then you pair him next to Dean. It's pretty nice. Yes, good pick up there. Um, LJ Thomas, NC State transfer. He is committed to Austin P. Um, didn't see much playing time at NC State, but definitely a guy who can probably make a big impact at the mid-major level. Um in the A Sun there. Um Colby Garland, Drake transfer. He is committed to Longwood. Actually a really good pickup for Longwood. Garland played some pretty significant minutes as a freshman. Decent passer, can control the offense. Um should be a really good player for Longwood. Potentially like all conference potential right away, I think. Um another guy that I think has immediate all conference potential is Bowden Scunberg. Uh, North Dakota State transfer. He's headed to Illinois State. Really good pickup for the Redbirds. Plug and play. He can be one of the best players in the conference right away. Um, any thoughts on those guys? I mean, you. He can reminds me it. of uh, Liam McChesney. He was. Yeah, you know, I mean, Sc- McChesney's like a big man. Scunberg's like a wing. Oh, that's right. He does, he's a big wing. Oh, they kind of look all... the same. though. they're just kind of. He's got a lot guys, of size. But... Yeah. Um. He should be pretty good on the wing. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's do we have Yusuf Kayat, Michigan transfer. Didn't really see much playing time there. He is head to Bowling Green. Uh, Nicholas McMullen, uh, UNC Asheville transfer, has committed to Georgia State. Good big man pickup for the Panthers. Yeah. Uh, Max McKinnon from Elon. He has committed to Portland. Really good pickup for Shante Leggins. Um, Great fit. Yes, Braxton Bayless from Niagara has committed to Western Kentucky. Um, good pickup there uh, for Hank Plona, I think, is their new coach after Lutz left. I uh-huh. um, believe that is who it was. Um, Bayless might have played under him in JUCO. Let's, let's fact check that. Um, I'm not 
because uh, the most Kentucky coach was at Indian Hills. Um, and I think oh. Bayless was – yeah, okay, so that, that, that does make sense. Played from there and is reunited at Western Kentucky. Matt Zona from Notre Dame. He has committed to Fordham. Didn't do much in his career at Notre Dame, but should be a serviceable role player in the A-10. Uh, UNC Greensboro got a pair of George Mason commits with Malik Henry and Ronald Polite. Two players that were pretty solid when they played at the A-10 level. Um, and I wouldn't see why they couldn't be really good moving down a slight level, but UNC Greensboro, still a very solid program, so good fits there. Kyle Jenkins from Lafayette has committed to Fairfield. Um, Justin Page, Cal Poly freshman, has committed to Niagara. Charlie Williams from William & Mary, he has committed to Lipscomb. Cam Gregory from St. Francis has committed to Campbell. Dylan Darling from Washington State has committed to Idaho State. Adante Holyman from UTSA, off to Georgia Southern. Michael Zanoni from Mercer, he has committed to Penn. And the last transfer that we're going to talk about committing is D2 transfer uh, Sean Trumper from Franklin Pierce. He has committed to Mary Max. So a lot of, still a lot of transfers, obviously, with there's so many people in the portal. They're all flying off the board. Not a ton of like the big names, because as we mentioned, it has been a dead period. So there haven't been visits going on lately, but. We should really see some big names flying out the board soon. Um, any any additional thoughts? I kind of flew through those last ones. Not a ton notable names, but any? Mm. No, solid role player pickups for a lot of those programs. Yes, a few a few big withdrawals we have though. Uh, Ray Harrison from Grand Canyon. He is going back to Grand Canyon, oh. withdrawing from the portal for his last season. Um, should have the chance to elevate more into that number one role. I do not believe Ty and Grant Foster is going to be back. No. So yes, that um that gives him a that gives him a big boost. He was really good two years ago. Kind of didn't really fit the best into his role this year. I think he's best as number one option. Um, which he didn't have the chance to be. But yeah, good good return pickup for uh. Grand Canyon, um, Hassan Abdul Hakim from UT Rio Grande Valley. He is going back to UT RGV for head coach Cleo Fennell, who was recently hired. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't have a ton to say about the uh, Vaqueros, but solid pickup, um, solid first pickup in a sense for their new coach, Kelton Talford, returning to Winthrop. Big pickup for Winthrop. Um, he was their best player last year. Should. Um, should continue to be a very good player there for in the Big South. Um, it's not nice when you can get those guys back because some players are just chasing the bag, and then I mean maybe went there, funnel up some money, but I mean he can mm-hmm. succeed at that level, so might as well keep doing that. And then Sabian Lewis, uh, Quinnipiac point guard who averaged over seven assists per game this year, he is going back to Quinnipiac. Um, for Tom Pecora in his second year. Um, as he head coach, any any thoughts about those four withdrawals? Oh, yeah, definitely surprised by some of them, but uh, yeah, I guess it yeah. happens. Yes, uh, yeah, not enough spots at the high major level for everyone. So mm-hmm. some players, some players return to where they had success. But yeah, a few cut lists, not a ton. But uh, Dante Maddox Jr. He. Tr- Cut his list to eight a few weeks ago and trimmed it down to five recently with Michigan, Creighton, Illinois, Xavier, and Louisville making the cut. Um, very, very solid shooter um, out of Toledo. Decent combo guard, too, with some passing abilities. Um, where where do you think he goes out of these? Oh, um, who are the five for you? Uh, Michigan, Creighton, Illinois, Xavier, and Louisville. I see my Xavier. I'm not gonna lie. I can see that. Um, they like their they like their mid major guards. Mm-hmm. Um, he just feels like a Xavier guard to me. I don't know. Yes. I'm not I'm not really sure where he ends up, honestly. I feel like yeah. a lot of these schools have a lot of spots where he would play. A lot of them would be good fits. Louisville would be nice nice because they just need guys in general. So does Creighton potentially, depending on some who could come back. Xavier. Illinois, I know they like him. I mean, I, I, 
if you're forcing me to pick one, I I like Louisville just because they have so many spots. They've already I think he could fit well with the players they already have. And he'd be just, nice next to turn. So yes. Um yeah, uh Dakota LaFou from Mount St. Mary says, cause this to Villanova, Syracuse, Pitt, South Carolina, Georgia, and Xavier. I think he will be going to Syracuse because they hired Dan Engelstad as an assistant yesterday. So um staying staying up in that area, adding the coach. Um I and Syracuse also has some spots open. So I would I'd think like he this would, pick up for Syracuse. He would follow him. his coach to Syracuse. Yeah. Oh. Um, Makes is that sense. what you would predict as well? Yeah. Them or Villanova. I think those are my two favorites. Yes, Villanova there. does need some players, but mm-hmm. yeah. Engel said, uh, taking the assistant job definitely makes it seem a lot more likely that that will happen. Um, Kevin Overton recently cut his list down today. Uh, Drake freshman transfer. He cut his list to Colorado state, Oklahoma, Oklahoma state, Houston, West Virginia, and Texas tech. I think he's either West Virginia bound because of obvious connections with DeVries or Oklahoma would be my other um the other school that I think there's a good chance. I believe he's from Oklahoma. That also would put Oklahoma State in the mix, but um so yeah. I'll be yeah, I'll play it safe at West Virginia on that one. Yeah, I mean I I think that would be a solid option. I mean it's high major level. He's a high major caliber player. Mm-hmm. So that would make sense. Um, but yeah, um, I suppose we should get into ranking our top 25 transfers from the last three days of the portal. Um, there have been some big names to enter, so we got 25 of them. Uh, do you have any honorable mentions? Uh, I got one, Cario Quindo. Okay, he was barely on my list. A few honorable mentions I had is our Chris Parker didn't play this season in Alabama, but I know a lot of people are in on his upside as a redshirt freshman. Um, Seth Trimble, I'm really, really not a huge Seth Trimble guy, but he was a solid like rotational piece on a very good North Carolina team. So um, I like him a little bit. Um, Mongolian Mike, Mike Sure of Um didn't didn't really do as good this year as I thought he could. I'm kind of starting to become out on him, but his potential, yeah, his so. upside is still kind of there. Um, very solid defensive player. Uh, Jazz Gardner, another guy that uh, didn't do too much at Nevada as a freshman, but his size, length, um, youth, a lot of intriguing stuff. Still there. He's behind teams. a ton of good bigs. I, I think he'll get a ton of minutes yes. wherever he goes. Yes, de- definitely, definitely a lot of potential there. So yeah, I'll just I'll just list those uh four off. We can talk about some of my other players that I had just off the list after we conclude our um list. But yeah, i I guess I'll start with 25 night. Brendan Hazen. Um really good shooter. Really good shooter. Um should succeed more in a better system after playing for Kyle Neptune at Villanova, who uh we we both don't really think is that good of a coach. Um I've heard some Yukon buzz already, which would be a would be kind of like a Joey Calcaterra replacement who obviously wasn't even there this year, but that would be great. I think Hosn can really shoot the ball and wherever he is, like if you put him in the right role, he can be really effective. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think system wise, it definitely did hurt him. I also just don't think he's really that good. Personally. He can shoot it though. He can shoot. Yeah, it. obviously. Um, and if you man, just bring when him he that... is not hitting shots, he cannot be on the floor. I mean, it's just that That's simple. True. Defensively, he, he is well. atrocious. Um, he had a lot of cold spells this year. Um, really wasn't didn't have many games where he was hitting shots. Um, so I, I yeah. don't know. Uh, he'll succeed in a better system, though. Um, yeah, I can already was... just see that. Yeah. But... Yeah, he would have been an honorable mention for me. Yeah, that that's that's fair. I was I just think he'll be better in a better system and he can shoot Man, it. So like whoever just needs it whoever <laughs> needs a shooter is gonna gonna be big. But um yeah, who do you have at twenty five? I had Drake Allen. Um, okay. I had him just off my list of honorable mentions I, I mentioned. Yeah, he's he's a really solid point guard. Been solid for the past three years at Southern Utah, Utah Valley, and anything else on him? Um, yeah, I mean, you just know what you're getting from him. Mm-hmm. Um, 
good pure point guard. He's yes. efficient. Yeah. No, no arguments with we, me there. Um, number 24, I have Cedric Coward from Eastern Washington. Um, a lot of good Eastern Washington players entered the portal. Maybe they're all headed to Washington State. Maybe they're not. But um, <laughs> I I would say Coward was their best player. He was easily their best player this year. Really efficient. Good rebounder. Good defender. Um, really broke out um, as we all predicted would happen with the just more minutes, um, even though he was really good last year when he played, although he didn't get it. There's too many minutes he did li- this year, but yeah, really versatile. Um, originally started at D3, um, now really made a big impact in his two years playing at D1, so yeah. He I, could I, shoot pretty pretty solidly, too. Yeah, um, he, he really so did. Really 38%. Did his yes, uh, so not, not terrible volume either, he, Made almost like one and a half threes a game, so I had him at he, eighteen. Yeah, uh, I like yeah, I, I really like him. He can be really good. Probably Washington State, I would assume, unless. Yeah. But he's a player that could test the waters. Could not NBA draft waters, but could like test to see what's out there in the portal. Maybe he can go high major. Like I would, I'd be fine with taking him at a high major school. Mm-hmm. Got a lot of length. Got got a lot of size. A lot of skill. Lots of like about Howard. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah. 2024. 24. Um, someone I wanted to put higher, but didn't get a lot of minutes or time this year. It's Aaron Gray. Um, mm. he, someone he I still like. This year. I mean, Indiana State was so loaded with guards and things. I think in maybe a mid plus, um, Indiana State was one of the best mid majors in the country. Um, I think he can still really play. I know he's still good. Um, yeah, he he's good, but I don't know if I would put him on here. He didn't even like see minutes this year. Even I mean, when Indiana he, State was a great team, like, yeah, he never even had sco- a ton he, of plays. Season of high players. was five points. Um, you know, he, I I put guys on here that will succeed in a, in a different non guard loaded scenery, and obviously he's not even a guard. I mean, he has guard skills. He plays. Yeah, on I mean, the he's perimeter. he's a skilled. He, he does. Forward, but... Um, you know, like <laughs> even at Niagara, he was a wing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he's he's a so. Wing. No, I, I still I like think Gray. He but... can really play somewhere where, you know, a team doesn't have great guards. Um, you know, a team needs some dynamic, wing shot creation, some defense. Um, I think it's worth it to put it on him. Yeah, on I mean, I I I think you still take at a lot of places, but. Mm-hmm. He didn't did not really do much this year. I was kind of disappointed, but also he was one like the two time transfer guys that didn't get a chance to mm-hmm. work into the system. And I will say that like Indiana State just had a really good thing going, so like they didn't really need right. him when he, like, when he the, came back eligible. But yeah, I, I was I was still taking equation where you know we're playing really yes. good basketball, our best basketball in like ten mm-hmm. years. Yes, you know, um, like they you they know, were really we're clicking, really but. Yeah, I think he could he could definitely still be a take somewhere. Um number twenty three, I have I have Cario Quendo from Oregon there as one of your honorable mentions. Um he can really get buckets. Um really was good his first year at Georgia. Um pretty pretty solid okay. score. That's his main uh, selling point that he gives you, but yeah, it was one Oregon player that stayed healthy this year, which no. is a big thing to do over there at Oregon. It's very true. That's not a not a bad accomplishment over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess you you had him just off. So any 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 thoughts about him or he's solid. Yeah. Pretty one dimensional, I mean, yeah. but he's solid. He's one of those guys like, yeah, like you know what you're gonna get out of him. He's gonna can plug, create plug some and shots score. pretty well. Um decently, decently athletic, but yeah. Well, big big mid range guy. But yeah. Twenty three, I had Mason Gillis. Um really. Really, that's you know, I, I knew you had at, someone probably pretty high, but I think I he definitely 12. benefits from a lot of Edie's attention that he draws. So he gets a lot of open looks off of that. Yeah. yeah, he's been disappointing for me for what I thought he could be, um, in his college career. But he he's he's a winning player. Um, you know, I don't think he's got a ton of skills really. Um, but he can really shoot it. Yeah, uh, he's a good shooter. Um, you know. Definitely a little streaky, but um, he gets a lot of open, high quality looks, and I'm kind of worried now yeah. with Zach Eady out of the picture. You know, the looks might be a little more contested. Is he, is he still going to be able to hit at a high clip? Um, you know, he's just 
it would be nice if he had an off the dribble game, but he doesn't. Um, defensively, yeah. he's laterally pretty slow. So, like, if he gets switched on to quicker guards, that can be an issue. But he guards forwards well. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I just really couldn't put him higher. Yeah, I had him at um, I had him at twelve. I just think he's just like so efficient is really why I liked him. Like, he's a really good shooter. Doesn't do a lot of stupid things. Like that's very true. Solid rebounder, I guess. Um, Any coach will really take him. Yeah, like yeah, like you can find a role for him on your team. Yeah, it will be an interesting change to see how he where he fits in, like what he does. But yeah, I, I would still definitely take him. A lot of age, a lot of experience, and yeah. So that was my that was my twelve. But at number twenty three, I have Brock Okoji from George Mason. Really good as a freshman, and he was a he was a reclass freshman, I believe, too. So even more impressive the fact that he was should have been high school last year and was actually pretty impactful. So, um, yeah, I, I'm really in on him. Can really get to the rim. Decently efficient. Um, a lot of that was propped up by the fact that he got to the rim so much. So his, uh, And he was pretty solid from a free throw line. So that's it's kind of his... developing. Yeah, it, there's still, there's still, yeah, still very... I had him at 15. I, I like what yeah. I see of him um, a lot. I um, do like him. Good good on-ball defender as well. Gets a lot of steals. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a lot, lots to like about Akoji for me. Um, Yeah, so 22, I got Issa Muhammad. Um, okay. Average double-double last year, 51% yes. shooting. Um, You know, former New Mexico State player. Didn't have a ton of high usage because he's next to Jordan Sears. And... um. You know, and Cruz, uh, yeah. Jacob Cruz, a lot of very high usage players. Um, yes. I think he can just slide into a high major. I mean, he's got amazing size. Um, you know, maybe not the best high major in the world, but he could be a pretty impactful player somewhere. Yeah, could I could definitely see him being like a bench big for a high yeah. major, like can really rebound. That's where I see him. Yeah. Sol solid defensively, decent finishing around the rim as well, so... Mm -hmm. A lot to like with that. I know. I know you're really big on him. I did not have him on my list, mm -hmm. but he was, he was a guy I thought about. Um, a lot to like there still with him. Uh, my number twenty one was Julian Larry for Indiana State. Um, their whole starting five entered a portal, and he is the one guy who I've heard like might not like follow the Church of St. Louis, or at least it's not like mm -hmm. a guarantee. Um. But he was really good this year. A lot of these Indiana State guys, I'm wondering, like, um, more specifically, like, Larry, like, how good is he? Or, like, was it just, like, the system that made him good? Or, like, He's a, lot a good of, shooter, you really. No, he, he is really good. But, like, you start to worry, like, were all these guys really that good? Yeah. Or was sure I, I just, like, a mastermind? was a which, beneficiary of the system. And he's more no, of just an off-ball player. Yes. But he is still really good. Was kind of their, like, point guard this year. Um. They kind of, I mean, they had a lot of guys that could handle the ball and like mm -hmm. pretty much like every guy actually. But um, yeah, he's a good shooter. Not like a not like a big three point shooter, but he usually makes them when he shoots them. Um, not high volume. Efficient score from all around. Really, really like him. I just wonder like how good will he be if he doesn't follow him? Like, will he really be that good offensively, or does, does the system matter like that much? But he would still be a very quality ad wherever he goes. Um, yeah. All uh, right. Yeah. Twenty ones, right? My goal, you Mike. Okay. Any, any other thoughts about him besides what I said? Nah, that's everything. Yeah, a lot, a lot of potential there, but he didn't really do as good as I thought he would this year. Um, number twenty, I have uh, Larry's teammate Jason Kent, another guy that is still really good, but. <laughs> I always worry, like, it's, I'm just worrying about these Indiana State guys, like, uh, more specifically these two as opposed to other yeah. three players. Um, because these, uh, Larry and Kent were more of, more of like, low usage guys. And Kent, Kent, was, game, Kent so. was so efficient, though. Like, he was crazily efficient from, like, he shot 75% basically from inside the arc. It was 80% from the line. I mean, wasn't a big-time shooter, but still shot, like, over 37% on, like, a make-a-game nearly. So, yeah, really good rebounder. Um, 
really had a breakout year from what he was last year. I just, again, I, th- I think he is a guy that probably will go to St. Louis. Um, yeah. So we'll be a very good player there if that ends up being the case. But yeah, just don't know because the system was just so good that I don't know what to rank these guys versus other guys who maybe were in a bad system, but would have been better potentially in the Indiana State system. Is uh, that 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 that's really been really tough for me to rank. Yeah, I get that. Um, so yeah, twenty. So twenty to all right, Jazz Gardner. Um, okay. I think with more playing time, the playing time he did have this year were very impactful minutes. Um, when Foster and Times are in foul trouble, sometimes Alfred would go and you know throw him into the fire, and he played really well. Um, mm-hmm. because I watched a ton of Nevada games, so yes, I mean I I saw played, him played a lot earlier in the season. Um, a little bit more, at least. and then yeah, then Tylen Pope got healthy, and yeah. then there became even less minutes for him. Um, I think he uh, high majors are gonna be all over him. Um. You know, to be a good backup big. Yeah. Um, I think Maybe. he's ready. He's got amazing. Probably still guys. a mid. Probably still a mid plus guy. I would. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I can really take a guy to high major didn't hardly play to mid major, but. But when you're behind I mean, so Nevada, many old bigs, you know they're obviously gonna play over a freshman. Yeah, but I don't know. I still think he's gonna be really good. Um, a lot, a lot of potential, a lot, a lot to unlock there. Um, number 19, though, I had Wesley Yates. Don't really know what we're going to get because he hasn't played a game in college. He was like a top 50 recruit for Washington, was hurt and just never never risked his eligibility. So, I mean, top 50 recruit with four years left. Still a lot of intrigue there. I don't have much else to say about him because he hasn't played yeah. a game. But I have him at 16, just yeah. off of intrigue. A lot of upside. Um, Heard really good things, and and he was actually hurt. Like not, like some freshmen just like aren't that good and end up redshirting. But yeah, he was he, he was hurt. hurt. Um, he he would have played. So yeah, I died him at nineteen. Yep. Um, and at nineteen is where I Jason Ken. Okay. Um, eighteen. I have Jabri Abdurrahim. Um, for from Georgia, really good shooter. Um, really good size can. Really, uh, yeah, good size in the wing. Um, I would like to see him go to South Florida because they're losing all their guys, and uh, their coach is his uncle. So that oh, would okay. that would be a good fit for me. But yeah, he he can really shoot. I think he had a little bit of a down year shooting, and eh, not really. He was just a little bit more efficient, but actually made a little bit more threes like total yeah, this year. Pretty good. Um, yeah. Can, can get to the rim as well. Had, but, can get to the free throw line. Actually, really good at getting to free throw line. Really good at making his free throws. So that's a good thing to see. Um, solid, solid size athleticism too. So can be a really good role player. Um, unless he goes to South Florida, he'd be more than a role player there. But yeah. if he if he stays and goes to his best high major option, I think he'll be a very good role player shooter. Can do a little bit of a little bit of uh, everything scoring wise. Um, and yeah, I had him, um, 18. Yeah, that's where I cowered. Okay. Uh, number 17, I have Tyron Moore from Georgia Southern. He was really good. Um, Georgia Southern, not a great team. They were playing a little bit better at the end of the season, but, um, Moore is really good. He was, he's small, which another thing that you like, not don't love, but he is really good. He can score from all three levels really efficiently. Can create um big good part of point their guard. Too. Yes, um, he was really on fire down the stretch. Had multiple thirty point games a season. Let's see, one, two, three, four thirty point games, and a lot of games in the twenties as well. So he can. He was an efficient volume scorer, which I really like to see. Even with his size, which is a limiting factor, can doesn't really affect him because he can score from all three levels that good. So lots of like he had uh mid 36 in his yeah. I mean maybe maybe even high major. Mid plus would probably be where he could thrive the most, I think, and also get it compete the most. But yeah, yeah, I mean he had 36 as a lot of team versus App State, very good defensive squad. Um yeah. so yeah, a, a lot to like a lot of intrigue there. Um yeah, really, really evolved into point guard this year. Wasn't really even that good last year, but 
it's really good this year. Um, mm. Yes, a lot, a lot to like with more. All right, yeah, seventeen really is where I had Aiden Holloway. Um, okay, I had him at eleven. Uh, yeah, I still really, really disappointing upside. season. Um, yeah, a lot of shot chucking. Um, but I think it's solvable. I'm glad he's in the portal. Mm-hmm. He can he can score um, like he didn't really, but like I know he can. He's got ability for sure. Um, it's yeah. just about shot selection and. Sometimes that's a problem that's easier to fix with others than uh so yeah. we'll see how he, that goes. He was a good point guard option too to like he actually didn't turn the ball over that much, like as it's a as freshman. Like, it's as out as out of control of a player as he was at times with his like shot selection and like he wasn't efficient at all, but like you would think that would be a guy that would also like turn the turn ball, the ball over, over a lot, but he actually didn't like that's and he good. was a good passer, so it's something you really like to see. I was super high in him coming into Auburn. Same. I still, I still think there's a lot left. I mean, three years of eligibility. I mean, he's a player that's going to be in college all four years because of his size. So I think he can be a really good college player. Like senior year, like I think he's going to be an All-American. Well, but I had him at right. 11 because he wasn't that good this year. But um, yeah, we'll, see. we'll see if he can be more efficient somewhere else. Um, let's see. Number 16, I had Darren Saran from UC Irvine. He was only a freshman this year, but really was impactful in minutes. He played not not a guy that played a ton of minutes, but when he played, he would score. He averaged like 10 points in only 19 minutes. Um solid, solid playmaker too, could distribute a little bit from the point guard. Um, and yeah, can just really score. That's that's the main thing. Not like a super shooter, but has a lot of uh, entry got like the wing guard position. Um, and yeah, three years of eligibility left was a real difference maker in the Big West as a freshman. Not a really good UC Irvine team, so I think there's a lot of intrigue in Saran. That's where I had Yates. All right, I assume you didn't have Saran on your list. No, but I I really like him. I think yeah. Um. Okay, so number fifteen, I had Aaron Bradshaw. Um, you you could put him way higher if you wanted to, but he he wasn't really that good this year. Um, he did bounce back from injury, which is always a tough thing to look at. He was really good, like right away when he came back. Like, like he came back from injury, like his like first few games, like his first game he didn't do much, but his like next few games he's like, like dang, like Aaron Bradshaw is really good, but then like kind of faded out of the rotation down the stretch. Really should be a really good rim protector, solid rebounder. Has a lot of skills. Honestly, I could put him way higher. He just like yeah. didn't really move me. Like he got ran out of the it's rotation. A fresh, right? Yeah. But I I he got ran out of the rotation in favor of like Onyancho and Ivicic who maybe not, those like, weren't the best good moves by ever. Coach Cal. I don't think those. But Bradshaw were good wasn't moves. really playing good after he like. I mean, Big I Z, Big Z was terrible. Like I, I he don't had his know. games, he had his moments. I wouldn't say it was terrible, but I mean, he can't defend at all. Bradshaw was a much better defender. Big Z shouldn't yeah. have been playing over Bradshaw. That I, I disagree I, with that rotational move. I really do. Um, yeah, and it I hurt them put defensively. Him yeah, I could have put him way higher. Very, very skilled, but Cal had a lot of season. question mark moments as a coach last year. We'll just say. Yes, um, now he's off to Arkansas, and who knows who Kentucky's going to hire? Not Scott Drew, because that's that has been shut down. Uh, um, everyone's been denying it. <laughs> yeah, um, run out of names. We'll see. Maybe maybe we'll get some calls. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, number fifteen then. That's where I had a Koi Jay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Um, fourteen. I have Tobey Awaka from Tennessee. I, I really like him. He should go back to Tennessee, though. I, I do enter the portal, like, today, so not not going to be on the list, but now mm. there's a starting big man position. I would, might as well might as well go back and claim that. But, yeah, Waka, really good rebounder, really good offensive rebounder in particular. He's a beast in the offensive glass. Um, yeah, extremely physical inside, efficient scorer, um, decent rim protector. Yeah, he's just a monster, so... Yeah, I had I, him at six. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I really could see that. Um, high motor. Yes. Uh. Yeah. So fourteen. Who did you? Fourteen. Right at Duke Miles. High points. Okay. I had him. At, I had him at ten. 
I'm, um, I'm a big fan. Of really him. like him. Six four, from Montgomery, Alabama. For what it's worth, so I wonder who's going to target him. And from a high powered, high octane offense. So I guess yes. I wonder who's going to contact. He, he him. would be a good fit with the tide. Um. Yeah. No. Really great shot creator. Think he's mm-hmm. going to translate well. Um, can really get to the rim. Can really score mm-hmm. from all three levels. Not as much of a shooter as you would like, but he can yeah. still shoot threes. He can really score from inside. Can really get to the rim. Can play make two. Can run to point guard. And yeah, um, he did have his troubles at Troy. Was staying healthy a lot, but was most healthy this year. M- missed a few games in the middle, but yeah, he he was really good for high point. So. Uh-huh. I think he's a player that could move to high major level for sure. Um, yeah, he's been getting a lot of interest already. But number third, let's see. Yeah, number 13, I have Chris Youngblood from South Florida. A lot of the South Florida guys entered a portal. Um, Selton McGill, we talked about in the last episode. There's still another player from South Florida that I will talk about in a little bit. But yeah, he was he was a player of the year in the conference. Not totally sure I agree with that decision. Co player. Yeah, of the year. I was. Um but he was still really good. Like not, but nothing I get against it. He him. is the definition of a winning basketball player. Yes. Like he can... Any coach any coach will dream to have a player like Chris Youngblood. Yes. Another Efficient, guy. Yeah. Doesn't turn levels. the ball over. Amazing defender. I mm-hmm. mean, he really just does no wrong. Yes. Um I, I had him at nine. I mean, okay. I I love yeah. him. Yes. I mean not nothing, nothing really bad to say about him. No. Um, yes. Yeah, so who do you have? He's leaving. I mean, he's gonna get a bag though. It's true. Yes. Can't can't you know hit on that. He is from Tuscaloosa. Like he's actually, like we're talking about miles from Alabama. Like Gungba is literally from where the University of Alabama is. That's true. I don't know. At, at it 13... depends if Sears come back. Well, not not for Youngblood really, but Alabama could be like. Side note, but Alabama, if they get their guys back, they could come back. They could be like the best team in the country. Like, they, they could. If um, they get, they showed me they a ton this year back. in this tournament. I was really excited yeah. when I saw. Um, um, at their team, I would have this guy top three. Um, I Arthurio Marks. I I I I kind of forgot to put him. I don't. I didn't even know what to do with him. He he. I have a big drop the charges next to his name. I, I yeah I I didn't even put him on the list honestly I didn't I don't know I don't yeah I just don't know I what mean, to do with him off of potential he's so good I like mean, even I, I even did. though the charges were dropped though like I I don't know seems like a McNeese type of guy like <laughs> or Ole Miss <laughs> like that that's the type of like like that's the type of like Bro, project that McNeese, will wait at McNeese he's player of the year oh. Oh my goodness! I mean, he would be Shahada Wells part two. I I could see I, I, I could see Magneto I like it. that. That makes so much sense. It like, does. Like he, he's technically has no problems with the law right now. Um, but there's still like, like, do you really want to take him like at a high major right. school? Like, do you like, really want to like, roll the dice again? Like the, the clouds are still over there. Like, I mean, oh, a hundred percent. Even though he has had his charges drop, which is a good thing. Um. I mean, he's been accused multiple times of stuff like that, so there's yeah. there's still red flags looming. Um, but yeah, if he if he gets in like the right system, if he gets no I more think he's an incredible issues off the court, player. he is an incredible basketball player. I thought he was going to be really good this year. A lot of big reason why Kansas didn't live up to their expectations because they were planning on having him in there. But yeah, if, if he can if he can stay out of trouble. <laughs> He right. can be a really good player. I didn't even have him on my list. I don't know what to do with him, but right, if I, I mean, was ranking based on like what he like, I don't, could I don't do. Know. I mean, man, he's probably like top three. <laughs> he has he has the potential. Um, but yeah, twelve. I had Gillis. Twelve. I had Seth Trimble. Uh, I actually like Seth Trimble. Really efficient. He just really doesn't like three. He's not bad. He's nothing like sticks he, out really. He's like, got he's, great size. Um, yeah, solid size. Six four. Um, I, yeah. I'm curious to see where he f- goes. You know, like I think maybe maybe Northwestern or one of the Wisconsin schools. I think are to okay. Um, I could really like him there as a spacer. He has a bigger role yeah, he there. Can't, he can't like really shoot. Like he was efficient, but he didn't really shoot that much. Yeah, 
I, I wouldn't call him. Sh- I wouldn't really call him a shooter. But um, yeah, like he was like, like he wasn't bad. Like he got a lot of a lot of solid minutes for like a one seed. But it's like nothing that he does really like stands out to me. Like oh, like that guy is really good. Like he just he's not bad. Um, I don't know. I think he's would interest. I'd be interested to see what he does. Like if he goes Northwestern, say like and so like starting in a bigger role, he could be up, intriguing. Like, I yeah, think. like I just I just don't know what we're gonna see out of him. Like I don't know that he can take on a bigger role. That's why I didn't That's really true. have him super high, but yeah. we've never seen it, so we don't know. Um number eleven's Ryan Holloway. And number eleven's right Ryan Conwell, someone I really like. Okay, I didn't um, put him at six. You could put him at high. I mean he's he was tremendous their best guard. Honestly, probably was. Um him or slope, and you could already I think, go either. I of think them. it was I think Connell's a lot. I mean, I didn't really am that much higher than Swope in my rankings, but I think Connell is honestly a lot better than Swope. Was more efficient. Connell probably translates really better score from all three the levels. Yeah, he's level. bigger too. Right. Um, he's like six four. Um, although hopefully he goes to St. Louis because uh, probably yeah, should have had fun. him higher because he's got eligibility over some of these yeah. guys I have above. Still, him, still but... two more years to play. Oh. Can kind of facilitate a little bit if you need him to. Not really a pure point guard, but. Kind of as some of those skills. Um, the yeah. jump he took was not a fluke. I don't think he, he can really play. No, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was also coming from a South Florida team that was kind Abyssal. of a mess um, before Abdurrahim got there. And then, yeah, really fit into his role. And, yeah, like the thing I mentioned about Indiana State, guys, like there is that thing, like that that still is there. The system was so good. But Conwell's a guy that I, I mean, I think all those five are really good players. Um, and the system just maximized them. But what Conwell, Conwell showed me was really impressive. Yeah, really, oh, he's really, really good. I probably should have had him even a little higher. He's yeah. a player. He's a kind of player that I tend to like. So, Let's see, so you had him at 11, right? Yeah, and I'd swoop okay. right above him. Okay, so I'd... I, 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 okay, I'll go go ahead and... So I, I'd Duke Miles at 10, and I'd swoop at 9. Swoop, he, he was playing injured for like... A lot of this season, like I'm pretty sure That's he's getting to think about surgery because, like, I'm pretty sure he oh, said like boy. he had like knee surgeries, like he wouldn't yeah, need it. To worry he, about, but he played through it, which um, mm-hmm. he, he wasn't that bad. But he just there were there was effects of that. But he can really mm-hmm. shoot the ball, can really shot create. Um, I think once he's fully healthy, his percentage from three will go way up. Kind of trailed out down to end of the season. I mean, because he was hurt, but um. Yeah, he he can. I'm curious to see what he looks like after surgery because a lot of his game is from quickness. Like, yes, I'm assuming it's not going to be like a major surgery if he was able to play through it for like a month or two. Like, it's not, yeah, no, it's true. Like, there could be worse surgeries, I feel like, if it's manageable. Mm. Um, but yeah, he is really good, can really shot create. Um, let's see, should you have a nine then? I'd young blood, okay. Number eight, I have Dre Davis from Seton Hall. Really solid player. On I do too. Let's go. Ma- match up there. First uh, first hit of the day. Yeah, he's just a really solid player all around. Really good defensively. Really good offensively. I mean, Seton Hall. He had an amazing year. Yes. Seton Hall allegedly does not have that much money. So um, he will get a big payday somewhere. Can shoot a little bit. Um, mm mm-hmm. Yeah, just really solid all around player. Not a ton of weaknesses. Going to be really solid wherever he goes. Efficient scorer. Good defender. Just really good on both ends. Not like a ton that sticks out about his game. Like he doesn't do anything like overly insane, but he's just really good at what he does and mm-hmm. pretty good at most things. Um, yeah, he he was really good for seeing all this. He really consistent score. Really had some big games. Yeah. A big reason why they were good and should have made a tournament, but yeah, that's I suppose a topic for another day. Um, yes. Yeah, so let's see what number are we on? Seven. seven. We have same guy at seven. Um, I have Kayshawn Pryor. I had Anthony Dolores though. I had Dolores uh, three. I, I like Dolores, but so yeah, Pryor. I had let's Pryor at three. We, we basically had the same Swapped. guys there. Yeah. Um. I love Pryor, the Orso, man. He's let's talk just... about Pryor first. Let's All talk right. about Pryor. Um, he just gives you so, like, he's just, like, so good, like, all around. 
Like, even though he, like, Youngblood was the better player, I would say, at South Florida this year. And maybe even something nah, I would take him. Yeah, prior prior some of the game. highest ceilings in, like, Like, he just, he can play anywhere. He's so good on defense. So versatile. Started to really come in as a shooter a little bit more late in the season. Can create his own shot. Can sometimes can create shots for others. Like, kind of has some of those. Like, he can just do everything. He's a guy that like NBA draft Twitter like scouts are like, you know scouts are salivating over mm-hmm. him dude like I, I think he's got some of the highest ceilings in the entire country like the amount of skills yeah. that he has is scary at his size mm-hmm. and he really um, started to like at end of season middle of the end of season really started to finally like he's one of those new wave bigs that. that scouts love um yeah. and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. man I just see him being such a such a hidden gem um yeah. in the portal uh i'm so excited for him and deloso deloso is the same way yeah deloso, deloso could be a great nba player i think mm-hmm. um oh. yeah i mean campbell wasn't good but at the same time deloso i mean i had him at three so i, was, I really like him six he can, seven big time shooter yeah. like great he's, volume he can do he can do everything too like deloso yeah more of like he would be more of a guard to higher level i mean he kind of was a guard he's campbell just was these are two guys, not just He's, great college players, but amazing uh, pro. Yeah, these potential. guys both have huge upside. Deloso, ever since I watched him a few games as a freshman, like I was super in on him to be really good. And he, and he hit the seen, portal initially, and then he came yes, back. Yes, yeah, he, he was um, the second time in the portal, did not uh, go anywhere. Last year, he decided to come back to Campbell. But yeah, he can he can really score. Can good shoot move a little for him bit. to come back um, low key. He really yeah, now, his now his stock is so much higher, even though, oh. even though he was getting – Looks from tons of high majors, like he was already even higher. He's gonna get more money than he would have got last year. Um, that was a power move, that's what we yes. call that. He was a full time volume scorer this year, was efficient, even though he increases volume by a significant amount. Um, yeah, can sh- really shot create, can get to the rim. He is, I'm big on Delor. So, even though he plays for a team outside the top 300 in Ken Palm, like Delor, so is that good? Ooh, Cam Jones returned to Marquette. That's not that nice. But yeah, side side note, side note. It's John Rossi notification just popped up, so I thought I would thought I would just let you know. But yeah, Delorso is really good. Um, and six is where I had Conwell. Yeah, six is where I had Awaka. Okay. Um, five I had Kylan Boswell. Okay. Um, I had Boswell for. Okay, uh, not not a huge Boswell guy, but um, it's kind of you were, like you were coming in. Yeah. I know he had a weird season. Very he, a, he did have a weird season. He was like so good at the start of the year, and like when they lost their games, he was like terrible. Like when Arizona yeah. like dropped those like weird games, like he was, he was atrocious. Like he that, had zero yeah. points against Oregon State, zero points against Washington State, That's crazy. five points against Stanford, six against Purdue, which Purdue lost is fine, but um, zero against Oregon. Really, yeah, six the other time lost to Washington State. Five when they lost to USC, four when they lost to Oregon, three when they lost it's to Clemson. Pattern. Like, it's a yeah, huge like pattern. he was, he was disappeared some games, and they really felt the reaction of that. But one thing I really like about him is he's is he's so young. He's still like eighteen. Like he, right. I think he turns nineteen like next week. But like he, he, even though he's only has two years left, like he is just so young and like. There's a lot more to develop that you could reasonably hit. And like even though like he might not actually be like that good, he was still the starting point guard for a top ten team in the country. And he can he's good on both ends, can play make, um, can shoot still. Yeah. So yeah, a lot to like about him despite some inconsistencies. I think he's Illinois bound. That would make sense being oh from my Champaign. gosh, that would be. Do you think Arizona's gonna push for Donovan Dent? No. He has to enter the portal first. I know. Well, I think he will. Give, give, give a little time. That would make sense, considering how much money he could get. Um, it's interesting to me. New Mexico guys haven't entered yet. Besides Mashburn, it was like, whatever. But, like, yeah, Dan and Tobin, like, they could get a lot of money. And, like, I would expect him to enter. Because, right. like, New Mexico, like. See, you know, we run it back. Maybe. <laughs> I just saw that Nelly Jr. Joseph announced he's coming back today. Oh, all right, um, all right. Which was kind of expected, but he is using his last year of eligibility there. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We'll see. 
But yeah, I mean, if they stay, they could I could be get pretty behind good again. That. I could but get I, I, I don't that. really expect him to stay because I feel like last year was No, I the don't year. either. I don't know. I agree. I, maybe we can run it back. Um, let's see. Where were we? Yeah, number five. Who did you have? I had Omar Ballo. Um, okay, I didn't, I didn't too. Great defender, um, really physical, great good finisher. Too. Um, really good on both ends. Yeah. Um, you just know where you're getting from him. Yeah, I, I would I would agree with that. Um yeah, he is a he's a big guy. He's a really big guy, really efficient around the rim, really good rebounder, and solid rim protector. Kind of he's not like a not yeah. I wouldn't call him like a rim protector, but he also did get a lot of blocks. Like he's kind of so physical that he's just like Yeah, it's good that you know that, you know, blocks aren't, you know. It's it's about affecting shots, not just blocks. He, he does, when it yeah, comes about and he does get a lot of blocks. Like, I just wouldn't categorize him as a rim protector type, right? Thing, just because, right. like, not like, not not that style of player. Um, he's terrible from a free throw line. Though. Like, no, he shot no. under fifty percent. He got fouled a lot. Like that. That's Hacaballo. That 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 would work. He is so bad from a free throw line, but he is a very good player overall. He One is. of the best players in the portal. So effective on both ends. Like. Has a lot of potential to be like maybe even all American wherever he goes. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I'd admit two. Um, okay. Number four, I have Mark Mitchell. Um, who? Oh, you know what? Ah, oh, did I you for, forget I, about him? Did I you confused him for from Makai Mitchell. Oh. Oh. oh, that's that is a blunder. Um, I'd assume you would have Mark Mitchell around this range. Yeah. Though. Um, top. Three. He is he is actually a really good player. His shooting form is just so bad. Like his shot weird. just looks so bad that like everyone kind of thinks he sucks, but he's actually really good. Um I do I do think it would have been odd for him to come back to Duke though, because him and like I don't know like how he would play because Yeah, I'd ha- like, I would have had him right above style would have been weird. right here. Um at yes. four. Um I wouldn't have had him above prior. Mark on that one. Okay. That that's that's fair. I, I can be on board with that, but yeah. I it would have been interesting to see what he would have done if he would have came back to do because he's not better than flag and like yeah, I don't know how they would play to together improve. and like neither of them are fives, but yeah. His shot is bad, but he can really still score from inside, really athletic, yeah. really good on defense, can get to the rim, good rebounder, a lot to like besides his shooting form, which For is sure. not a lot. Brings to everything like. else. Yes. Um so yeah, I had him at four. Uh, I guess yeah, I'll just say you had him around there. But who who was your actual four then? Um, so that was where I had Boswell. Okay, yeah. so in three Delorso. Um, yes, prior you and three. You had three. I had Ball at two. Bradshaw two. So it looks like we were both okay. You had Bradshaw two. That that's a lot higher than I had him, but I I could see like putting him anywhere. Honestly, um. It looks like we are both shaping up to have Robbie Avila at number one. Ah, uh, he's, he's just awesome, dude. Like you know, Larry, Larry, Nerd, Larry Blurred, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Milk Chamberlain is again never a lot forget. Of fun nicknames. Never forget CBB content making he, him mainstream. I definitely, mean, I think he would have became mainstream anyway. But like, yeah, that definitely he, like helped he sped speed up, up the process, process man. It, it really it sped definitely. up the process. That absolutely helped. But yeah, he is. He is really good. I mean, um, he's the kind of player where you just bring him in, and he's going to change your whole offensive mm, system. I, so, I'm I mean, like, yeah, I'm like extremely confident about him going to St. Louis. He, I, I think he entered with like a do not contact tag. So like, I don't even think he's oh, like wow. looking anywhere else. I did see Swope was like looking somewhere else before, like, but it has still. Like, see, I thought Avila would go somewhere else. Nah, uh, Avila Av- is definitely going to St. Louis. Okay. Like, I, I, I don't think there's that much of a chance he goes sure. anywhere else. Um, okay. Yeah, Swope, I think he's going to look around before he goes to St. Louis. Yeah, St. And, Louis is going to be, like... And Larry might not go to St. Louis, but, like, Avila is definitely going to St. Louis, in my opinion, and based on everything I've heard. He is so good, though, can... Score from low key. All three do levels. these moves bring back sincere Parker? No, I think I don't think he would even. No. Okay. I, like he he's really good, but like I'm not sure if like he'd even really work with. I mean, he's a great shot creator. Did they? Do yeah, good he's with good, but like he's good, but I I think I think St. Louis just 
erased all evidence. Brian of Conwell's season. kind of like just the same player, except it's a lot better overall, right? And everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Alla can is extremely skilled. I mean, can really pass the ball. One of the better passing bigs in uh, college basketball. I'll just say it. They're your eight ten favorites. I haven't said that before of St. Louis. You probably have a few years ago. Maybe. Yeah, they were I, supposed I, to be I'm, really I'm joking. No, I, we have said that all the time. Yeah? Oh. I thought I thought you were just saying that because they've been so bad recently. With Travis but... Ford, 2021 with um Perkins and Yeah, and crap. then Perkins got hurt like in the exhibition. And like, well, that's 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 a season. But yeah, Avla is he is so good. Like, I feel like a lot of the guys that have like crazy highlight reels and stuff like aren't actually as good as advertised, but he is better than advertised. He yes. is so effective. You actually have to watch him play to yes. really gauge how good he is. Um, and I do think St. Louis is a great fit for him because he, he oh, can yeah. play anywhere, but like he is kind of slow. Um, he's going to be like Neil Quinn was this year to an extent, yeah. except uh, like I mean, in space yeah. and more, more of an aggressive the, the passing, the passing, the passing skills are there for sure. Yeah, he's um, gonna be a more of a scorer version of Neil Quinn. Yeah, he is. He is that good. Um, mm. One of the best players in the portal will be a great pickup for St. Louis, assuming nothing crazy happens there with him going elsewhere. But yeah, and he's a guy like St. Louis definitely has nil money, but he's one of those guys that like nil deals like come to like they just and nil comes to him like he doesn't like because of like how popular he is and like. How much he's been blowing up. Like he like gets like actual NIL. Like mm-hmm. the actual like brand deals and companies like are gonna come to him. Like not like a thing where like he just gets a check from the school. Right. That's and, a good point. Basically, or the boosters, whatever you want to call he's it. He's the but, brand. Yeah, like he he can market himself. Like a lot of these guys, like like let's like find another guy unless like like Balo, like actually <laughs> I don't know how NIL works for him because he's uh not American, but like he's a really good player, but like you're really gonna like market based on like him, like, like no, like, this Ballo is not the same is type of player. Eye, is, is a cultural icon. He did. He he is, but right. but like, even though he might be just as good as Ava, like Ava is gonna get a lot more nil just like from brand deals and stuff. Like, like he doesn't. I mean, St. Louis actually does have like money, but mm-hmm. like he could go anywhere in the country. Like he could go anywhere in the country. Schools with no nil, Stone and he Hill. would still be. He would still be very paid. He could go to Stonehill and he would still get a bag. Not from Stonehill, but it's from the from all like the deals he has. I'm not sure what all he has right now, but I know he has to have a ton of stuff. He's a CBB content NIL deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's look at some of the other players that entered that are good but didn't make a list or at least partially intriguing. Um Let's see. Um, Khalifa Sacco um, from Utah State. Big, physical, could be a good oh, bench big gosh. somewhere. I don't like him. Um, really? I think foul. he's... Constant foul trouble. Yeah. He does give you energy as a bench big, though. I guess, yeah. Julian Brown from Wagner. Um, he was okay. He was like double to score there. Mason Madsen. He was a guy that was... On my own mentions list, he can shoot it. Mm-hmm. Um, a little bit like there's CJ Noland, good, good. Yeah, player I originally had him on the list, but yeah, yeah, he's a good player. DJ Jefferson from Tennessee didn't play, but um, has some intrigue somewhere. Was a pretty good recruit. Um, Patriots Patty Gimas from Dayton, I actually kind of like. He didn't really play at all like Carly this year, but yeah. I, I kind of did like some stuff I saw from him. Taryn Frank from Idaho. That's the guy whose eyes are like not really aligned, but he's oh. he's, he's a solid like mid major player. Maybe he's okay. It's probably worth a take somewhere. Former high major guy. Um, Justin Hill from Georgia. Not good. So he was, yeah, he's okay. He was really good at Longwood at least. So we'll see. Bit possible. Yeah. Uh Dylan Anderson, Arizona big man, didn't play that much. He actually redshirted this year. Um, didn't play that much last year, but should be some intrigue. Ethan Price from Eastern Washington's actually really good. Yeah. No, um he's a good player. Big man can shoot it. Washington fishing all State. around. 
Yeah, gotta be. Gotta be. Um, Matthew Alexander Moncrief has just been, like, going downhill his whole career. Um, yeah. With all honestly. due respect. I guess there's some intrigue there, but, like, I don't know. We'll see. Carter Welling from UC Irvine. I, I actually really like him. He averaged seven points in 13 minutes as a freshman. Yeah. I think he could be pretty good in a bigger role somewhere. A few more Eastern Washington guys, like, Lawan Watts, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, average like nine and five as a retro freshman, I believe. Ernest Ross from NC State didn't play all this year hardly. Um, who else do we have here? Julius Rollins. He was a guy who fouled in the, in the back championship game. I I don't blame him at all for transferring. I would I would leave so fast if I did that. Yeah, no, of course. <laughs> Got to get out. Davion Bailey from Ball State's pretty good though. Um, Bradley as a weirdo. I actually do think Bradley yes. as a weirdo is pretty good. Bradley as a weirdo is nice. As as bad as St. Louis was, um, he was. Pretty and I good. think that's a player in St. Louis could really benefit from bringing him back. But would you bring it back because you have Avila? He's good Ideally. for. Uh, and. Uh, Ezra Weir is great on the glass too. He is. Ezra like, is he, great, but like he's a. I think he can contribute to winning. Um, he could. He is, but like I don't know how you play him and Abba together because. Or you well, bring him off the bench for energy. Is he gonna want to come off the bench? Uh, that's the thing. If that's, that's, for that's winning that's for a thing. winning team. He might. He's never been on a winning team. <laughs> we'll see. Joey Hart from Kentucky. Still yeah. kind of confused why he went there, but. He'd be a solid mid mid major player. Um, let's see, Mari Jordan from Georgia, redshirt freshman. Noah Shelby from Rice, and supposed to be a good recruit at Vanderbilt. Didn't really do much yet. Quincy McGriff didn't play at all at Cal State Northridge this year, but was solid rotational player at Duquesne last year. Arma Armani Mighty back at big for Boston College. Mm-hmm. Colin Holloway's decent. Yeah, no, Holloway's solid. I almost had him on my list. Uh, D'Antoni Gordon, another guy that's pretty solid. He's actually really good. Um, Pretty solid. I mean, like, he'll be a good mid-major transfer edition. Carlos Stewart, never really... He was hurt a lot this year. Yeah. Really Even when he was game. there, he, he really let us down. Yeah, there's intrigue to him, though. He should just go back to Santa Clara. But he's from yeah. Louisiana, so I don't know if he... Yeah. Let's go to McNeese then. He's from Louisiana. McNeese or Tulane? McNeese. McNeese, I, McNeese is going to be so good because they're keeping Will Wade, assuming. I'm sure. I mean, they already got like I would Joe love Charles McNeese, other day. So. Oh my goodness. I mean, we need McNeese, Will Wade, another guy. He brings an aisle with them. Um, mm-hmm. Keyshawn Murphy, solid backup big from Mississippi State. Um, Caleb Boner is what he is. Probably going to FAU. I think he'd be a solid player there. He's physical, um, plays pretty hard. Definitely a lot of things you don't like. Uh, Baylor fans more had a love hate relationship with him, more of a hate relationship with him. But you know, he's like not like that bad really. He'll be good in a mid major, assuming he goes to FAU. I heard he entered with a do not contact tag, which like I don't know where else he would go besides FAU. Back to BYU. Would BYU want him? No, (laughs) exactly. He was like he's he's not that. Bad. I feel like he's a little bit overhated, but also I understand why he kind of gets hate. <laughs> um, I know what Owen said. He just doesn't do that basketball thing very well. Yeah, it's it's uh it's uh it's an experience. Um, Dane Erickstrup, another Eastern Washington guy, pretty solid. Ethan Morton. What what do we think about Ethan Morton? Do you think he's gonna go to like Penn State or something? Ooh. I don't know. He's from Pennsylvania. I actually would take him. Yeah, no, I, I actually would love him like, under my roof. I, I agree. Amazing, amazing on ball defender. He mm-hmm. is a great on ball defender. Yeah. I'd be actually intrigued. I mean, Purdue was a one to with him starting the whole year. Like, obviously, I got it. Definitely was nice. He didn't. Butler, play as much PA year, native, but... man. I mean, hey. I mean, I, I he's not like, like he terrible offensively, but like he can kind of distribute a little, can kind of like play the point guard. Like, he's a winner a little bit. Yeah. He can really defend. Um, not not some guy I would like overly want, but I think there could be worse things to do. Cam Woods didn't play that much at NC State this year. Pat Swemnick from West Virginia. Um, 
Chris Howell from St. Mary's is solid, I guess. Munir Hima, still don't really know why Syracuse took him. But, yeah, that, that kind of concludes all the portal. Injuries of the last few days. Any any other notes? Any other – any anything you want to say before we end the episode? Oh, yeah, long, uh, long Santa Claus list today. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, uh, make sure to – Subscribe to our YouTube, uh, Hoop Scoop Media, and make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Hoop Scoop Media. If you're listening to this on any podcast platforms, a five star review would be greatly appreciated. Feel free to comment if that's an option. I know it's not on some of the podcast platforms, but make sure to comment on our YouTube too if you have any questions or DM us. We would love to answer any questions that you might have. Subscribe, like, comment, share, all that fun stuff. But yeah. We apologize for the delay in a few days between episodes. Kyle, you got a promotion at work. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so you're uh, working more hours and you're not available when we usually podcast. Yeah, <laughs> no, of course. It's making things a little more difficult, but that's what it is. But yeah, yeah. Appreciate everyone for listening and we will we will try to get it out daily going forward. Yeah. Well, we, we might have to bring some new people on the podcast at times for when Kyle is working but yeah appreciate everyone for listening and stay tuned for the next episode of portal bonanza to drop